Snail Mail is a band that was started around 2015 with singer, songwriter, and lead guitar player Lindsay Jordan. Today we're going to see how she recorded music in her bedroom on GarageBand and how critics would eventually call her an indie prodigy. This is Snail Mail, a history. Lindsay Jordan was born on June 16, 1999. She grew up in Ellicott City, Maryland, which is a little outside of Baltimore. Ellicott was a quiet suburb town, and her parents both worked really hard, with her mom owning a bra store called Bra La La, and her dad would sell school textbooks to homeschool programs. Her parents were also musicians back in the day. Lindsay was first really inspired by the early 2000s movies, like School of Rock and Freaky Friday. She saw a picture of Lindsay Lohan with a telecast caster and she then wanted to play guitar right after that and she was determined to get a guitar and learn the instrument finally when she turned five she received her first guitar which was a fender squire she fell in love with the guitar and she would practice for two hours a day and she would eventually take guitar lessons and would be eventually classically trained she would sometimes play live shows with her instructor at shitty coffee shops and restaurants she said but would also sometimes fill in with her mom's friends band called the eight balls and they freaked frequently played at a bar called Looney's Pub, and Lindsay's mom's store, Bra La La, was actually right next to the pub. Lindsay would sing backup vocals and would play guitar for them. When she was about seven years old, she wrote her first song, which was a ripoff of the Ashley Simpson song, Piece of Me, and her friend Sarah played drums. Lindsay would also try to play in bands with the neighborhood kids, but nothing really ever stuck. She would also attend rock camp over the summers, and it was pretty much all guys there, and they basically made fun of her for being a girl and trying to play music. She said it took her a long time to realize she was a good guitarist because they would always put her down, and she said most of those kids were wannabe metalheads and they were just trying to be like Megadeth. When she got to her teen years, she was really into bands like All Time Low, AFI, and Fall Out Boy, and at the time, she didn't think girls could really front a band. She knew they could have solo careers like Avril Lavigne and Hilary Duff, but the day her sister took her to a Paramore show, she finally realized that she could front a band, and it changed her life. She really took songwriting more serious by the age of 12 to 13 and she started writing snail mail songs at 14. She took influence in Fiona Apple's songwriting abilities. She was also really influenced by her guitar teacher Mary Timoney and she was in a popular band called Helium. They actually met while attending a Thurston Moore show. Mary was teaching Lindsay's friends at the time and Lindsay was wondering if she had any more room for her and luckily enough she did. Mary wasn't her first guitar teacher but one of the most influential ones. And Mary gave her lessons till about 10th grade, but she didn't really need any more after that. She started playing guitar in her local church band, and in middle school, she would start to play jazz band, and she was attending Patasco Middle School. When she turned 14, she actually started working as a security guard at a Mayweather Post Pavilions. I'm pretty sure it's like a concert venue, possibly, not 100% sure. Anyway, her sister was the manager there, and she basically was able to get Lindsay a job there. She had to check bags, and tickets and you know basically normal security stuff but she wouldn't rat out anyone for having any drugs and honestly I just think it's really funny because she isn't that tall so <laughs> I couldn't imagine running into this little short blonde lady as a security guard once she graduated middle school she was on to high school and she was attending Mount Hebron High School and she would also play music in the school plays with one of the plays being Godspell oh yeah well I forgot to mention that she was a huge hockey player back in the day she started playing hockey when she was about eight years old and she would play up until her junior year of high school. She even went to girls hockey sleepaway camp and Lindsay said they were all gay at the time but no one really knew it and they awkwardly tried to talk about boys. She eventually would quit hockey because all the guys were jerks and they were really like alt-right and super masculine and she felt just kind of beat down emotionally. So back to the music side of things, she started recording music on GarageBand in her bedroom and she used to only record music under the name Lindsay. Lindsay Jordan before coming up with snail mail and in May of 2015 she released sticky her first EP. She was only 15, and this was all recorded by herself in her bedroom. The EP only consisted of guitar and vocal based, 
with no drums or bass or anything else. The first song on the EP called Untitled would actually be re-released on Habit and the song would be called Habit. It was very interesting how this EP really came about, just kind of how a vulnerable teenage girl in the suburb feels, struggling with self-doubt and being stuck in a state of unwellness. The song Ghost is not so much talking about paranormal things, but more about just being lonely in your room and talking to yourself like an introvert. The album would actually later be released on cassettes through Dog Belly Records. She actually would later take down the project, but it is on YouTube, the link will be in the description if you want to check it out. She would sometimes try to book herself shows at coffee shops and restaurants, but she would eventually find the DIY punk scene and didn't want to play the shitty coffee shops anymore. And she would realize that she would need more members to play a live show. She would have Sean Durham join the band, and Sean would play drums, and she actually met her in 8th grade at a beach house concert. And then Ryan Vieira would play bass for her. And after about 2 weeks of band practice, they were actually booked to play the UN Festival in Maryland, which was Unregistered Nurse, if you wanted to know what UN standed for. Anyway, that was in the fall of 2015. And obviously by this time, Lindsay thought of the name Snail Mail. She thought of it on a car ride one time, thought it was really cute and catchy, and it kind of just stuck with them and she can't change it now. She actually wanted the spelling of Snail Mail to be M-A-L-E instead of M-A-I-L, but she thought it was kind of stupid, so she just did M-A-I-L. Once they played the UN Festival, they actually gained a lot of attention through the band called Priests, and they ran a record company called Sister Paul Polygon Records. Lindsay actually sent them a demo tape and they thought it was really cool and they wanted to record a record with her. They go on tour with Priests before the Habit album even came out. They had a lot of songs for Habit already written. A lot of the songs had to deal with crushes and again, she didn't have any of the names of the songs yet. She just wrote down the girls' names that the songs were about and she put those on the set list so they would know what songs to play. She wasn't openly gay yet, even when she released Habit. And her parents actually joked about her that she was gonna marry her future bass player, Alex. And she finally came out to them one time on Christmas. Anyway, so their first real tour was with Priest in October of 2015. Their EP was actually recorded by Jason Savage and GL Jaguar in the spring of 2016 in DC and I'm pretty sure it might have been at one of their houses. Lindsay was actually having a battle with bronchitis for the past eight months and she recorded that while she had bronchitis and she said she sometimes was throwing up in their backyard a lot when recording and recording the vocals were really hard. This was the only EP album that Sean and Ryan would be on. They would later leave the band in 2016 and they would have Alex Bass play on bass and then Ray Brown play on drums and Ray played in a band called DC Sparks and she met Ray at a show through a mutual friend and I guess Alex actually saw her at a show one time and thought she was really good. On July 12th of 2016, Habit the EP was released. The intro track, Thinning, was their most popular song and would get people's attention immediately. The song has two meanings, about being sick with bronchitis and literally thinning out but also could be about her being stuck in life and trying to convince herself that there's nothing wrong and she might feel unease. She said that she was lovesick when she wrote that song and she wrote it in about an hour. The next song, Habit, how I was saying, was actually released on their first EP, just vocals and guitar, but now they added drums and it sounds really good. The song is more of a mental situation rather than a physical one. She goes on about how she loves to sleep in bed and how she never wants to leave and it's her best friend. It's a common topic talked about in the snail mail songs throughout all of them, especially thinning, heat wave, and speaking terms. Also, heat wave and speaking terms are on the new album. I'll get to that later. Some people think the untitled one on the sticky EP was a lot more personal because it was just vocals and guitar and you couldn't be as distracted by the drums in the background. The next song, Static Buzz, which is one of my favorite songs on the album. The song pertains about self-isolation, which also includes overthinking small things, with the intro lyrics being, shutters on my house, keep the sunlight in. If that's not enough to keep the people out, then I don't want to know what's on the other side. The lyrics are a way to express that despite closing yourself off from the outside world, people always find a way in. She also touches upon how she spends a lot of time watching TV, 
but it doesn't keep her alienated. Sometimes you float between wanting to be by yourself or wanting to be with certain people. She also said in an interview that she wrote this song while on a plane. Dirt is the next song on the album, and she said it's one of her favorite songs off the album. This song is talking about a certain dumb and unrealistic crush. A person who was older than her and she was pretty bummed out about it, letting herself get dragged down by this crush, but she knew in a few years she'd be laughing at herself about it. She said, Dirt is an ode to herself. In the next song, Slug, Lindsay uses the insect as a vessel to reflect on fleeting identity and sense of self. Not being like the rest of society, sociable, extroverted, and interactive, yet rather being introverted and isolated and alone, wishing you could be like the rest of society sometimes. Also at low moments, we have a moment of clarity, and we understand ourselves better and eventually think you're not as doomed as you think. The final song, Stick, would actually be re released on the LP Lush in the following two years. The song starts off stating that she used to be close with someone, but not anymore. And the rest of the lyrics are very vague and they can go either way, going back and forth from how Lindsay feels and how her lover feels. She said that EP was just all over the place and sloppy and was just a sigh. She didn't even think people would listen to it and wouldn't play a lot of shows. She said she would write a full song for the EP and then put her guitar down for weeks to months without writing or playing anything. Sister Polygon would release the EP on cassettes, and I'm pretty sure six months later it would be released on vinyl. They later would shoot a music video for Thinning, and honestly that music video is so fucking cool. It's like at a graveyard, so go check it out. It's pretty dope. Anyway, the indie hipster blog, Hitchfork, would pay a lot of attention to it and slowly she started to get a lot of offers from record labels. Her first real tour was the fall of 2016. She even had to go to the principal's office to get a permission slip signed to allow her to miss three weeks of school just to go on tour. When she finished up tour and would be back in school, she said she felt really awkward and embarrassed about it and didn't want to brag to the other kids. Even though teachers really supported her and some of the kids at the school would be wearing snail mail t-shirts. Coming to the spring of 2017, she was getting ready to graduate and she already had been on two tours. She had been applying to a bunch of different colleges and she was planning to attend St. Joseph's College in Brooklyn. She wasn't 100% sure on what she wanted to do, if she wanted to do music full time or school full time or try to manage both of them. She said she was always a good student and even graduated high school with a 4.1 GPA. She always felt like she was just going through the motions with school and music was her real passion. She already had written some of the songs for the new album and all these labels were looking at her so she didn't go to school and she took on music full time and eventually she would be signed to Matador Records in September of 2017. She said she signed with Matador because she thought they actually cared about her music and she liked the bands that they put out. Matador was actually ready to sign her before they listened to any of the singles off her new album but she sent them some demos anyways. It took her about a year and a half to write this new album. She had about 30 songs she had to pick from. She said the new album was her baby and she was so proud of it and was so excited for people to hear it. So her new album Lush came out on June 8th of 2018 through Matador Records. She recorded it in Woodstock, New York. Her producers were Jake Aaron and Michael Levine, and Mike Zimmerman did the design for the album cover. She liked the album name Lush because it could mean so many different things. The first song on the album, Intro, was actually a reprised version of the final track of the project, as a longer and more fleshed out version of it. So if you're gonna listen to Lush for the first time, I suggest listening to the song Anytime right after Intro because they're obviously the same thing. So the song Anytime or intro. I guess kind of the whole album actually revolves around one person who isn't interested in settling down with a single person. Despite the pain this person caused for her, she still feels strong and connected with them. The next song, Pristine, actually received Best New Music by Pitchfork, and honestly it's one of my favorite ones too. Lindsay said the song is sarcastic and melodramatic. It's kind of like punching their old EP Habit in the face, and Habit feels bad for itself, and Lush is aware of that. It's the first song that she wrote for Lush, and she thought about putting it on habit, but it never made the cut. Basically just being in love with someone and only that person, but 
them not loving you 100% back. Speaking Terms is the next song, and it's kind of a downer and sounds sad. Talking about not wanting to break up and end a relationship, and asking her partner not to give up. After that, we have Heat Wave, which is one of my favorite songs, because it has a sick-ass guitar riff in the beginning of it. Heat Wave is a modern love song. We typically live for ourselves, our jobs, our brands, our self-development, but that leaves little time and energy for others and results in alienation from others and our humanity. Lindsay contemplates her unrequired love for another person, chasing personal novelties as opposed to love. She ultimately chooses to live for her humanity and to seek deep romantic connection. A heat wave invokes feelings of half-hearted acceptance at the thought of staying still and not doing anything and procrastinating on life. It's a common theme touched upon in Lindsay's music. I also think it's kind of funny because this song is one of her most popular songs and she's talking about green eyes and the band Waves, which is obviously my favorite band really, has a song called Green Eyes and it's also the most popular one. So hey, if you're trying to be a successful musician, just uh, write a song called Green Eyes. The next song, Stick, was actually on the old EP that I was talking about before, so we're not really going to discuss it. Let's Find an Out was Lindsay's favorite song she's written. She's very proud of the lyrics and the guitar melody in it. She wrote this song really fast in the studio because they needed one more song. But hey, maybe rushing is good because she thought this was the best guitar melody she has ever come up with. She also said this song is very personal to her. And whenever a song has a personal meaning to her, she never gets sick of playing it. She also stated one time when she was playing the last song anytime live, she started crying. The next song, Golden Dream, is touching upon religion and how some girl she likes is religious and has a cross for a necklace, and she said God hasn't really done anything for her, but she wished she knew him on a more spiritual level. And the next song, Full Control, is just a salty song about a lover leaving her for someone else. And then one of the last songs, Deep Sea, the lyrics are happy at first, but then they have a darker meaning to them. She would actually ask to leave her class just to go into the music room and play guitar and write songs. And if any teachers ever came up to her and gave her any problems, Problems, she told her that her teacher in her last class told her to come here and do this. Fuck school! So that pretty much sums up the album. And personally, I think there's a lot of similarities between the Habit EP and Lush. You know, the albums both revolve around love. And I personally think Habit was talking about crushes and not being able to be with someone, you know? And Lush is talking about being in love with someone that you used to be together with and you broke up for some unknown reason. Who knows, maybe the next album she'll make will be about being in a relationship with someone. Out of the two albums, I really liked the way Habit was recorded more. Just the drums, really. The drums gave more of a raw and like a live feel to it, and the drums on Lush are just kind of very quiet and don't really stand out to me. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that Matador re-released Habit, and they added more color to Megan Schaller's design. They would also record a cover of the Courtney Love song, Second Most Prettiest Girl in the World. Courtney killed Kurt! They were touring constantly after that, with bands like Girl Pool, Frankie Cosmos, and Beach Fossils. I actually did a history video on beach fossils it's in my playlist if you want to go check it out and anyway she says her parents are really nice when she gets back from tour they have all her favorite candy and when she's not touring she just wants to be with her friends and do normal things like see movies and she actually moved to crown heights in new york at a point but only for two months she said her apartment was full of cockroaches and just greasy men she missed the small quiet town she grew up in through the years of them touring all the time they would actually have second guitarists play with them and here's some of the members that played with them they had daniel butko play guitar kelton young play guitar and ian eilenbo play guitar. Not sure if I said that last name right. And their touring member right now that plays guitar and keyboard for them is Madeline McCormick. And this was the first girl that toured with them since the departure of Sean, who played drums back in 2015. So if you're not a huge fan of snail mail, but you watch all my videos, the moral of the story is never give up something that you love doing. You never know what could happen and maybe one day you could be playing huge shows and sell out in a sense. But the thing you shouldn't do is don't expect that to happen. Make music or art or anything you really want to do for yourself. 
Do it because it's your passion and you love doing it. Don't do it just because you expect to make it big. Well, alrighty, that pretty much wraps this episode up, but let's get into some fun facts of snail mail. Alrighty, so one of the first CDs that she bought was an all-time low CD. She also contributed a song to the most popular middle school game, Sims 4. Her favorite subject in high school was English. A lot of people actually compare her music to Liz Farrell, and she was actually in a cover band of Liz Farrell, which was called Lizard Farrell. <laughs> Sometimes plays bass in one of her friend's band called Longbeard. She has gotten really into fashion because of snail mail. She loves the spice Old Bay, and honestly, Old Bay fucking sucks. I got sick off of it and puked, but I might have had way too much because I was putting it on everything that night. She also says she wants to go on a retreat to Northern Italy just to write music. And lastly, she also believes in paranormal spirits, so... That's probably why she didn't message me back when I asked to interview her, so well, it makes sense. So what is next for Snail Mail? She'll probably release an EP, an LP, maybe some singles in 2020, since it's been two years since the full LP release, and Jesus Christ, time goes by fast. I can't believe it's almost 2020. I know she has played a couple new songs, and she actually asked the crowd not to put the new song on YouTube, but some jackass did. All right, a choke. My top five favorite songs have to be off their first EP, Thinning and Static Buzz, and then off her full LP is Praise, Heatwave, and Anytime. All right.